Hey everybody, Nick here, and today we're gonna do some disassembly and maintenance on this little guy right here. This right here is the Protec Runt number five, their fifth iteration, and uh, this is a good knife. Uh, right now, let's go on ahead and check things out. Dead centered, uh, running great. I mean, it's an auto, so you really have to work to have it not running great, but still, it's running great. Um, this is just a good piece overall. Uh, looking at it carefully here, um, if we deploy the blade, this is, by the way, an automatic knife, as you just noticed. But if we look inside there, we see that there are two holes that correspond to the screws for the clip, which means, well, the uh, clip screws aren't holding anything together. So I don't actually need to remove the clip. And I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to have the, uh, I'll leave the blade open for this portion because I don't want the blade to come randomly flying out as I'm doing this. I want to remove as much spring tension from the system as possible. So to start with, I'm going to grab a hex bit here. Uh, let me find the properly sized hex bit. I'm using an iFixit driver set at the moment. Um, this is their big old driver set. And, uh, you know, sent my way, but I'm just kind of curious to see how... Okay, so this appears to be the proper size for one of them, but not for the other side. Uh, this would appear to be a number two uh, hex bit. Uh, perhaps two millimeter or something like that. Go ahead and pop that out, and I'm going to set these down. This is, by the way, a strong red thread locker, but it does not appear to be red Loctite in terms of grip, so I don't know exactly what's up there. But I'm taking these screws out, and I'm setting them down in the proper places on my mat so that I know which direction they came off the knife. And then I'll get in here, and I'll get the pivot, and that is one size bigger. So let's grab one size bigger, see if that's it. That is a little too big, actually. Let's... We have something intermediate. Am I going crazy here? Uh, that's a 2. That's a 2.5. Maybe this is not actually the same. Uh, maybe it's not metric size. Let's take out this other Weeha ratchet set. By the way, if you're curious about this or any of the tools I'm using, uh, go ahead and check out nickshabazz.com slash tools. And uh, you'll get the full list here. Looks like 3.30 seconds. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so they're not using metric sizes. That's okay. Um, but you just need to know that. All right, so at this point in time, we have entered the danger zone, so to speak. Um, not that this is particularly a dangerous process, but it's one that you want to be very careful about because there is a spring, and that spring, uh, actually, there are two... <laughs> Remember I just said something to you about there being springs? There are actually two springs. One of them is underneath the button lock there, this guy, and one of them is <laughs> in the blade here, guys. It's been a day, and I, I and I ain't a brilliant man at the start of it, so I sure as heck won't be one at the end of it. Um, Anyways, let's go ahead and clean the damn thing up. This guy is the Protec Runt number five, as I already mentioned. It has some springs. In the future, if you were a smart person, you would keep everything kind of held together and then gradually reduce the pressure. It worked out, um, but still... Yeah, uh, no, not exactly my finest hour, but it, it's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll get through it. So I'm going to go ahead and clean off the blade. Um, This is sort of an interesting construction in that there's really not a whole lot of steel in the middle there. I don't think it's actually problematic in any particular way, but it is sort of what it is. Um, But my goal here is just to clean things off. Uh, one thing you're going to notice is that the... um. Uh, bronze washer here is, well, I'm sorry, the bronze handle does not have a washer. That's because what are you going to do? Put in a bronze washer? Um, this is a bronze aluminum. Uh, that is the surface here. You can see they've done a lot of heavy internal milling to knock down the weight a little bit. You can see the backspacer is integral to the whole thing. Um, the stop pin, however, is not. The stop pin lives up here, and you need to make sure you reinstall that. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. By the way, it is good that they have a stop pin here because bronze is many things, but super hard is not among them. And and so, therefore, you you very much want them to have a um, you want them to have a stop pin for this you know blade to continue hitting against when it closes. Uh, I'm sorry, when it opens. So, uh, yeah, there's that. I'm gonna go ahead and use this Q-tip here and just get up, clean this area, clean out this little bit here, and then clean this up in here. Beautiful. And uh, we can go ahead and clean off the brass uh, bronze here. 
This material is interesting in that it is very much, you can see here, the difference between the inside and the outside. Um, the outside has been in contact with my hands and my pants, because I've carried this fair amount. The inside is um, entirely something, uh, it's entirely unblemished, so to speak. So there is definitely a patina that will come about on this, because bronze patinas, that is a chemical fact of life, and... Um, Protec are able to do many wonderful things, but counteract chemistry is not one of them to the best of my knowledge. If they are, Dave over at the Protec is keeping his ability to manipulate the physical universe very much on the down low, which I don't blame him for. Otherwise, you've seen the X-Men movie, it never goes well. So anyways, um, what we're going to go ahead and do here is we're, we're all cleaned up, we're roughly ready to go. So I'm going to put this guy back together and put a little bit of lubrication on the washer here which is a big old washer. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit, oh, actually, I should clean off the outside of the pivot here. So I'm seeing that there is a little bit of gunction around the pivot where this guy rotates, which is fine. Go ahead, clear that out, beautiful. Um, and now what we can do is, I'll continue that, a little bit of lubrication. And here. The thing about a uh, an automatic knife is that, by and large, because there's a spring providing a lot of extra opening force, you're not super concerned about, you know, oh my god, is everything optimally tuned? Is there so little force as possible? It's not really the case. It's not the, the, the issue. Uh, you will have enough force. It's just a question of that. So, okay, next step here. There are two, this, this little spring here has two ends to it. One is a pokey sticking up end, one's a pokey sticking out end. You want to make sure that the pokey sticking up end is going in the, the hole here, or that the spring itself goes into the hole. Problem is, this spring is designed to be at tension even when it's set open. So, it's not necessarily going to be the case that things are properly aligned when you get started. So, what I'm going to want to do here is to uh, set, so first off, the, 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 the pokey sticking out part is sticking out the hole there. Spring's on the right side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it down such that the sticking out part goes into this groove right here. So I'll kind of unite the two of them together. Note, however, that this puts everything out of alignment, right? Um, because right now the blade is far farther up than it needs to be, and frankly, that it can be. So as a result, it takes a moment to get everything back into place. It takes a moment to get things, you know, seated properly. Um, and this, by the way, is how, and I'm not going to do the whole thing here, but this spring underneath there is how this works automatically. When I move the blade this way, it builds up tension. Then when I release it, it opens back up again. Normally it stops at the stop pin, which I'm going to go on ahead and I'm just going to see if I can't transfer the stop pin over here just because I'd like it there. Yeah, there we go. Good. Okay, so we've got one of the springs managed. Next spring is this guy. This is the button lock spring. So the button lock itself is fine, and I'll go ahead and I'll put the put a little lubrication on the blade dang there. Um, I'll put this spring inside the bottom of the button lock here, and then I'm going to drop this whole assembly in. This probably won't push in immediately. Oh, no, it pushed in immediately. You should probably go find a better YouTuber. You know, Metal Complex is doing really good things lately, and he says things that aren't dumb uh, all the time, which is good. Um, so anyways, I digress. What I've got, uh, what I'll go ahead and do here is I'll press in the button. Uh, things are a little bound up here. Uh, things aren't perfect, and that probably means that the button is slightly out of alignment. The problem is when I lift this handle off, this button's gonna try and shoot across the room if it's not properly held in. Oh, there we go, okay. So I've got the button in. Now that the button is in, I should, I forgot to lube the other side. Okay, so I'm lifting this up and I'm securing the button. There we go. What I'm realizing is I should have done this. Oh, it's been a long day, but sit down, Nick. Go on ahead. Go ahead and do a disassembly. No, there's no harm to come of it. It's going to be fine. It'll be a nice way to relax at the end of a difficult day, he says. And then, and then. Anyways, so I'm pressing the button in now. Once I do that, and once I move the blade a little bit, that allows everything to snap together and into position here. So... What I'm going to do right now immediately is I'm going to reinsert, and I'm keeping some downward force on this guy because there are springs involved I'm trying to separate these out. I'm going to put a little bit of blue thread locker on here as I keep the downward force on there. 
Very slightly awkward, but no more than the rest of my life is awkward. And believe you me, it occasionally is. Um, but everybody's life is awkward. If it wasn't awkward, it wouldn't be life. Uh, if I woke up someday and suddenly nothing was awkward, I would be pretty concerned that I'd, like, got pulled into the Matrix or something overnight. There's some weird deception going on. All right. Let's go on ahead and insert this guy. This is screwing directly into the bronze on the other side, so I want to be sure not to torque it too hard, you know? Uh, and then we'll go ahead and put this guy in place. And now, at this point in time, that fired. There is a little tiny bit of play. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to tighten the pivot up a little bit. Oh, yeah. Of course there's a little play. The pivot's too loose. Okay. Now, fires, kicks like a mule, or a runt, I suppose. Deploys beautifully. Centering is dead on. Alignment looks good and i'm just gonna double check not because i think i need to but because i i want to make sure just make sure these guys are perfectly tight beautiful and we're good to go this guy is ready uh the last thing i will do is go on ahead and grab one of my bajillion microfiber cloths and actually a little bit of eyeglass cleaner not because I'm advocating a particular product or approach, but just because I know it works well on polished blades. And I'm just going to de-fingerprint this whole affair a little tiny bit. Clean it up. Make it beautiful. And there we go. We now have ourselves a glorious freaking uh, polished blade and everything like that. And of course, if you want to down the road um, de-patina this, uh, the, this bronze here... You absolutely can, right? You could use a polishing cloth or something like that. Or, you know, that's that's a possibility here. I'll show you just a little hair of it there. But you can see if I do this, it just starts to polish that off a little bit. Um, but, you know, that patina is pretty natural. It'll happen. And, uh, you know, I see no reason not to let it happen. But nonetheless, it's definitely a thing. And the knife is running beautifully now. No concerns whatsoever. Beautiful. Love seeing the iteration here. Love seeing the improvement, and uh, relative to the last run, that is. And uh, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you. Have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.